I'm here with Mr. John Mufood, CEO of Jamaica, Jamaican Teas. The company is doing very well in Jamaica, but today the purpose of this conversation is to get his opinion about what are the solutions that he sees to combat the rising tide of crime in Jamaica. Thank you very much for the opportunity. The big issue is that we have been having this crime problem now for over 40 years and it gets worse every year and we have reached the stage where we have lost confidence as a people that we can do anything about it and we haven't stopped once and for all to say enough is enough. What gave me reason to start to make noise about it, talk about it and, and, and get the word out is that last year we had an economic recovery program initiated by the IMF, which was very, very successful and remains successful today. So it gave me hope that when your back is against the wall, you can do something about it. Unfortunately, where the crime situation is concerned, we're not, we haven't been forced into coming up with a crime plan that really sacrifices, make, the people make sacrifices and we have to do something about it. My vision is that Jamaica should be seeing two, not two million tourists a year, but 10 million tourists a year, just like Hawaii. But more importantly, the million or so of Jamaicans that have left the island since 1960, 1962, they want to return when they retire, but they're not returning. Uh, because of the crime situation. And can you imagine if all of those Jamaicans that lived abroad came back to retire, came back and spent their money, came back to live, what a difference it would make. Jamaica is one of the most beautiful, naturally beautiful countries, yet everyone is afraid to come. Even our tourists, they're locked up in all-inclusive hotels. That shouldn't be the case. John, let me ask you, um I understand that crime recently touched part of your corporate family. Can you speak about that? Well, like many people um, who are affected by crime in Jamaica, one of our employees was waiting for a bus outside the office and he was assassinated with 10 shots to the head. And um, the, the reaction from my staff, while it was one of horror at first, they became accustomed to the idea of it and, and you know within a day or two life moved on and I thought we shouldn't be in a situation where life moves on when somebody close to you is, is killed like that and that was one of the things that started me talking about it. The, the big issue is that over 40 or so years each party comes into power they talk about crime but they don't do anything about it and the private sector who fund the political parties have not taken this on as their own initiative. They have said, I am going to leave that to the government and I'm not going to force them or try to force them to do something. In the US, you know, you have politically, you have a lot of people who uh, make contributions to, to the parties and so on, but they want something in exchange. In Jamaica, that thing that they want in exchange traditionally is economic issues. They don't see the fact that crime is so bad that that's, what, that's also affecting economic growth. Jamaica shouldn't have a per capita income of four or five thousand dollars per year. It should be 25 or 40 thousand dollars a year. So teachers, policemen, nurses are all underpaid and want to leave Jamaica. We don't want that. But the only way we can stop it now is to once and for all have a bipartisan um, detailed plan of action that is documented, that is um, strategic in its nature, that is long term, that attacks not just crime but the issues that surround crime like the court system, um, the prison system. Prisoners going to, you know, in, in Jamaica they go into prison and they come out worse than they went in because there's no re rehabilitation. And where I believe we can make a change is that if we can get the private sector to understand the power that they have and come together and use that power to force a bipartisan approach to the solving of crime. 
people uh, will talk about, if you talk to 10 different people, they'll have 10 different things that they think, if I do that, it will make a difference. It, it's not 10 different things, it may be 150 different things that will come together in a cohesive and clear plan. That is what we need, and one that is monitored by independent um, pe persons of integrity and that reports to the people of Jamaica the progress that is being made. That's what we need, that kind of ma massive effort to tackle crime. Are you hopeful or do you see any signs on the horizon or in the public sector where such initiatives are likely to take place within the foreseeable future? There is now beginning to be talk in the private sector. There is a new president of the PSOJ. He seems to feel that this is one of his most important initiatives for his presidency. The Jamaica Manufacturers Association is talking about it and they're coming together uh, as a group to, to discuss it and to, to uh, plan uh, how they're going to approach the authorities to ask for this change in approach to the tackling of crime.